Hello friends, today I'm reviewing the Selkirk SLK Halo Paddle, the first in the Selkirk line to use a raw carbon fiber face. A quick note before I jump into this review, it's been a while since I last released a video because I got into a couple of incidents which left me with a big black eye and a massive sutured gash across my neck. Although it may sound like it, I was not in a knife fight, but I did decide to stay away from the video camera for a while. But I had been busy testing paddles and I'll be releasing several reviews and analyses in short order. So stay tuned for videos about the Carbon X series, 6.0 Black Diamond Paddles, Legacy Pro, new EVA foam paddles, and many more. Selkirk was a bit late in the game to release a raw carbon fiber paddle, but in what I think was a clever move, uh, this paddle was released in its budget line. The SLK brand starts at only $50, and the Halo sits at the top of this line, coming in at $140. The reason why I think it was clever for Selkirk to release the Halo in their budget line is because they're basically saying, okay, everybody seems to want a raw carbon fiber paddle right now, so we'll release one, but our premier paddles are way better. Personally, I don't entirely agree with this because the newest raw carbon fiber paddles seem to have both the best spin and the best durability of any other facing materials, but regardless, well played Selkirk. If you do decide to purchase this paddle, you can take 10% off the price of the paddle at Fromith Pickleball by using the affiliate code 10 John Q. or if you want to purchase it from Just Paddles, I'll provide another affiliate code in the description below, which provides this channel with a small commission. Okay, so as I mentioned, the Halo sells for $140, making it one of the more affordable raw carbon fiber paddles on the market. There are some comparable paddles that sell for close to $200, so at this price, the Halo is a good deal. There are four varieties for the Halo paddle, based on style and shape. There are the power and control models, and there are the Max and the XL shapes, the Max being the traditional square paddle and the XL being an elongated paddle. The power model is 13 millimeters thick, and the control model is 16 millimeters. As expected for a raw carbon fiber paddle, the spin on the Halo is good. I was a little skeptical because the surface feels smoother to the touch than other raw carbon fiber paddles, and spin testing by other reviewers has been decent but not great. So I was surprised to get a result above 1800 RPM for this paddle. That places it within the high spin tier for the paddles that I've tested, and it's nearly identical to the results of the Gearbox CX-14, Grooven, and ProKinex Black Ace. But as you can see in this chart, paddle technology has come a long way even in the past year, and some of the newest carbon fiber paddles are getting results well above 2000 RPM. For example, the new 6.0 Black Diamond paddles and the Carbon X series paddles all get over 300 RPM more than the Halo, which is a big difference that results in noticeably more ability to shape the ball. The most important technology on this paddle is the raw carbon fiber face. For those of you who want a deeper dive into what exactly is raw carbon fiber and how does it differ from other carbon fiber facing materials, you can click here to go to that video and I'll put a link to that video in the description below. For this review, I use the XL shape as I prefer playing with an elongated paddle. So my comments here are based on the XL control and power models. To me, the faux leather grip is a nice touch, making this paddle stand out looks wise. And judging from the website photos, it looks like they've started using a red edge guard, which also adds style points. And props to Selkirk for molding the handle all the way around the polypropylene core instead of leaving the core exposed along the edges and then just putting wrap over it. When the plastic core is exposed under the wrap, it feels cheap and can cause sharp edges and pinch points on the handle. This is one of Pickleball Studio Chris Olson's pet peeves, and it looks like companies are starting to listen to him. I like the extra long handle on the XL version, which comes in at 5.75 inches. Plus, the neck tapers up gradually instead of flaring out, so it's comfortable to put a second hand on the paddle for two-handers, even if you have large hands. And this brings me to one of my own pet peeves. Raw carbon fiber paddles should never be sold without a protective sleeve or a case. Having unprotected raw carbon fiber 
banging around inside of your bag is a very bad idea. Small scratches and nicks will accumulate over time, reducing the performance of your paddle. Selkirk gets a bit of a pass here because they're selling the Halo at such a low price. But honestly, a neoprene sleeve can't cost more than a few dollars wholesale, so why not just throw one in and add it to the price with a small markup? And don't even get me started on companies like Yola, which sell their Hyperion paddles for $220 without a sleeve. If you want a basic neoprene sleeve from Yola, it'll cost you an additional $20. To me, that's just unconscionable. Just throw in a neoprene sleeve with the price of the paddle like every other company who sells in this price range. I've been playtesting this paddle on and off for the past four weeks. The first thing I noticed is that the paddle face is not at all lively. There's noticeably less pop than comparable paddles, even on the 13 millimeter power version. The 16 millimeter control version, as advertised, is very much control oriented. Resetting and dinking were its strengths, but it had no pop and putting balls away required a big backswing and muscling through it. Although it does have a bit more pop, I wouldn't call the 13 millimeter power version a power paddle. And I agree with Brayden from Pickleball Effect in calling this an all court paddle. The control is there, but there's also enough pop to make it seem like you don't have to manhandle your speed ups and putaways. For my preferences, adding lead tape to the neck of the power model made subtle improvements because it made the sweet spot slightly more forgiving and it allowed the paddle to travel through the ball easier, giving it more power. The 16 millimeter control model feels top heavy out of the box, which makes it hard to customize with lead tape because it just compounds the weight issue. But fortunately, the stock 13 millimeter power model is very light. Mine weighed 7.5 ounces unmodified. So it can handle some lead tape without feeling too sluggish. The sweet spot on these paddles is okay, but it's not great in my opinion. Uh, I would say that the 16 millimeter version is slightly more forgiving in terms of sweet spot than the 13 millimeter, which to me, the edges felt a little dead and weak. And there were several times when I was hitting the ball a little off center and it just died and landed in the bottom of the net. As I mentioned, I added half an ounce of lead tape to the neck area of the power paddle, bringing the total weight up to 8.0 ounces. And this did help make the sweet spot feel slightly larger. The Halo is a standard raw carbon fiber paddle with no bells and whistles, so no edge foam and no thermoformed perimeter. But the price reflects this, so kudos to Selkirk for lowering the barrier of entry to the raw carbon fiber paddle market. In my opinion, this paddle is comparable to the Carbon 1 and 2 models, so the earlier original versions and not the newer X models, which have more advanced technology. All of the Carbon models have more spin, and they're not quite as soft as the Halo, so the Carbon 13 millimeter version is more of a power paddle than the Halo power version. I also suspect that the Halo paddle surface might degrade and lose its spin quicker than carbon paddles because Selkirk is probably using generic raw carbon fiber rather than toric fiber cloth, which carbon uses. So if maxing out your spin and the longevity of the paddle face are not your priorities, then I'd say that saving 40 bucks on the Halo is probably a good option. If you're not a fan of some of the newer paddle technologies, so again, edge foam and thermoforming, and you want the benefits of raw carbon fiber, such as better, longer lasting spin and added control, then the Halo is one of the better options out there, especially for its price. However, Ronbus recently released the R116, which has Torre carbon fiber, gets way better spin, and it sells for only $120. So prices are definitely coming down for quality paddles. And by the way, I will do a review of this Ronbus paddle soon. Also, there are newer companies selling paddles with all of the advanced technologies like edge foam, thermoforming, and nano-engineered texturing on the carbon fiber surface for only 30 to 40 dollars more than the halo such as six zero and legacy so if you like the benefits that these technologies provide i'd say that these brands are worth the extra money okay that's it for the selkirk halo stay tuned for more paddle reviews and deep dives into gear and technology and a special thanks to just paddles for sending me the halo test paddles until next time